Okay, good. So, um, um, hi, I'm Mustafa. I'm one of the machine learning engineers at uh, DAS. Um, I'll be talking to you in the next 20 minutes about the different uh, deep learning capabilities that we have uh, at NERSC, uh, how to access the resources and how to use them efficiently, and uh, also some um, uh, links for further resources on certain, like for how to do certain aspects of deep learning uh, at NERSC. So to start with, um, so this talk is actually focused on deep learning. Uh, we do have, uh, of course, like the traditional machine learning um, uh, software stack is all um, something that, that runs at NERSC and uh, the, it's a standard uh, thing and I'll talk a little bit about that, but I'll focus mostly on deep learning. Um, as you all know, uh, by now deep learning has been, um, um, is on the way to transforming uh, science. So there's a lot of excitement about to, uh, the potential of deep learning for solving so many problems that we can't solve in, uh, we, some of them that we can't solve in using traditional methods and some of them uh, where deep learning will help us do it faster. Um, and uh, um, I, I won't go through, uh, to, through the list of uh, things here, but um, I just want to highlight that in the, in the sphere of the DOE, there is a lot of uh, um, uh, big investments that are either already um, uh, here or they are coming uh, for, uh, for different applications of deep learning to the various sciences that uh, the DOE um, uh, is involved with. Uh, there is a, like a 300 page report that came uh, from the town halls on AI for science. Um, I'm sorry that in the short time, I won't be giving an intro to what deep learning is, uh, but I can just say that it's, uh, uh, so deep learning is a part, AI is the, is the general theme of how to use computer to perform tasks that uh, humans usually uh, perform. Um, machine learning is, is a, is a particular way of, of doing AI uh, using statistical methods and deep learning is a sub uh, class to, to machine learning that focuses on using neural networks to solve the same tasks. So, um, uh, and uh, with neural networks, we can actually solve more, even more tasks than what we were able to solve using machine learning, but it's still, it's a sub part of machine learning that uh, focuses on using neural networks. Um, the, um, uh, the approach that we have uh, for um, uh, supporting uh, deep learning at NERSC is uh, we do that at uh, multiple levels. First of all, we, we focus on uh, making sure that we have a uh, software stack that is optimized for performance on our, uh, on our machines. So we work closely with uh, the hardware vendors and also uh, the uh, software uh, uh, vendors, in this case, PyTorch and TensorFlow with Google and Facebook to make sure that the software is, uh, of the gives the, high, the best performance that we can get out of our uh, machines. And um, uh, so that's for the software stack for accessing the resources. Um, um, our preferred way right now is to, um, uh, there are two ways of doing, of course, interactive uh, Jupyter notebooks to do prototyping and to run small uh, experiments and tests. So that's something that um, uh, one, one way of accessing the resources. Another is to, um, for, we, we provide um, uh, tools to that enable um, uh, large scale uh, deep learning uh, through the batch system. And finally, we also um, um, try to, uh, to give uh, training and consulting um, uh, to, to essentially organize or conduct some training and consulting um, um, uh, programs for applications of deep learning or science. And I'll talk a little bit about this uh, later on. So first on the software stack, um, let me see. So um, if you, if you look at the plot, uh, plots to the right, or the, the first plot, uh, the, the, this, this one, I, now I remember that I'm using the cursor. Uh, so um, there are different libraries that are famous, that are popular for using uh, deep learning. Um, uh, for machine learning in general, people use scikit-learn and that's something that runs um, uh, smoothly on our machines. Uh, for the purpose of this talk, we'll focus on the things that are related to deep learning, which is Keras, TensorFlow 2.0, PyTorch, and TensorFlow uh, 1. These are the most popular uh, libraries. Um, 
the software that we provide uh, is um, uh, is usually compiled with the libraries with the backend libraries that uh, perform best on uh, on our machines. They they essentially the linear algebra libraries that perform best on our machines, and um, uh, there are multiple ways of of accessing those. Um, uh, one of them is just to use the NERSC modules, which I'll talk a little bit about, and that's the most popular um, uh, approach. People, at least for prototyping and testing out things in the beginning, they just use the NERSC modules. You see, there's 89% of the of the users use that, and then you can also set up your own Conda uh, to um, if you want to further customize. Uh, beyond what you can do with the modules. And then you can also, uh, some people prefer to build from source or to use Shifter. And Shifter usage is actually on the rise for, for the software uh, stack. So that is, that's, an, that's the, uh, I'll, I'll be talking about each one of these. Um, to do, so all of this is for a single node or a single GPU performance to do beyond, to, to go beyond that as you, if you have from, experience with deep learning, you know that um, um, it requires a lot of data, which takes a long time to train. Uh, so you might need the distributed training. So that's another aspect that we focus on is how to do distributed training on our machines. I'll talk a little bit about this in, um, yeah, later. And then I'll also mention Shifter and Jupyter. For, for the modules, um, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. So we have TensorFlow modules and we have also uh, PyTorch modules and uh, TensorFlow um, includes Keras. So if you want to use uh, uh, Keras, uh, we provide Keras that is back with a TensorFlow backend, which is in TensorFlow 2.0. So you can also uh, do it, uh, use just the TensorFlow module. And the way to, to check which versions are available, you just do module avail TensorFlow or PyTorch and it gives you a list of those. Then you can do, after that, you can do module load, for example, a particular uh, version. Uh, if you're running on the CPU uh, um, uh, partition, if you're running on the GPU partition, there would be another one with a GPU here instead of Intel. Uh, same thing for, for PyTorch. Um, we try to include the most popular packages uh, in these modules. Um, if you want to further add other packages without having to do a lot of things or to create your own conda, you can just use the uh, pep install minus, minus minus user, which will install any package that you want in your uh, in the in the uh, user area related, which is uh, which comes with the with the TensorFlow or PyTorch module. Um, sorry, uh, let me check. Just want to check on time. Okay. So. Um, if you want to create your own Conda, then we would recommend that you look at the docs for TensorFlow and PyTorch to, to find out which version of which build, which Conda builds of TensorFlow or PyTorch to install. Uh, it's likely that the default ones might uh, not give you the best performance on our machines and we provide some guidance on that if you, um, if you ever need to create your own Conda environment. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Shifter is uh, becoming uh, more uh, common now to run um, uh, deep learning stack at, at NERSC. Uh, we do provide um, uh, images of PyTorch and TensorFlow that are optimized for best performance um, on our machines. Uh, this is currently only for uh, Core eGPU, and that is what we plan to use um, uh, uh, in the future on uh, Perlmutter. Um, the, the way to use this is if you want to use it interactively, you can, uh, this is again only on Core GPU. Uh, you'd, um, uh, you would essentially use this with, uh, with a couple of options, mounting the, the network uh, volume and then um, running um, the image that you want. In this case, for example, PyTorch uh, version 1.5. Um, and you can also, um, uh, yeah, if you want to submit to submit batch jobs with uh, with these, we recommend that you use the Slurm uh, batch options for Shifter rather than using the interactive command as it's here. You just use uh, you you specify the image and uh, the volumes to mount in the sbatch options, um, and then after that you just run your script. And if you get to use it and you have some feedback, please uh, let us let us know. Uh, we are interested in in um, uh, 
essentially if things are working great, uh, we'd love to hear about that. If things are not working, especially if things are not working great for you or you see degradation in performance compared to the module or the bare metal uh, versions, please let us know. So that's in terms of how to access the, the software stack. Um, um, uh, this is the, so general recommendations of how to do things. Um, we recommend that you use the modules. That is the easiest way right now. Uh, and if you're on Core GPU, you can also try the containers. That's what we recommend on Core GPU. Um, if uh, things don't work out for you, you please check the docs to see which, uh, and you want to build your own Conda or your own image, please check the docs to see uh, how to, to, to get the best, uh, uh, the best ver versions of TensorFlow or PyTorch. Um, for uh, developing and testing your, your workflow, uh, we do, if you're running on the batch system, like directly on a, in, a, in a command line, then uh, using the interactive um, QS is, is, the, is the best way to do this. You would get uh, resources uh, almost immediately, um, and then you can do prototyping, or you can use uh, Jupyter, uh, which also just requests an, uh, some resources from the batch system. Um, the one thing that we recommend that you do when you run uh, your uh, your code once you get to, you've finished the prototyping and you're just you now you're about to run like full uh, full scale we recommend that you check the utilization of of either the CPU or the GPU that you're using um, if the utilization is under 100% um, significantly under 100% that uh, usually means that there are some bottlenecks in your in your workflow. And the most common bottleneck is to uh, is the data pipeline. And essentially, for example, if you're running with a GPU, um, your data pipeline cannot keep up with how fast the GPU is processing the data. So it's just so the GPU is waiting for the data pipeline to fetch more data. And um, uh, the there are multiple recommendations there to uh, the. The first one is to use the, the framework specific API for, for data loading. Uh, for example, for PyTorch, there's a, a PyTorch data loader. For TensorFlow, there's also uh, tf.dataset.data.dataset that we recommend to use. And those would re also give you enough uh, knobs to tune uh, the data ingestion pipeline. And hopefully that will give you best performance. If that doesn't work and you're on the CPU, you can use burst buffer for uh, locating your data. If you are on the GPU, you can use the, um, um, uh, the SSDs that are, uh, are at slash temp on the, core, on the GPU node itself. Um, if you have any questions about that, uh, please um, just ask or, or send me an email or send a ticket and we'll, I'll send you, we'll send you more guidance on that. If everything works and you're sure that the data pipeline is all all right, and every, and, but you still have uh, utilization issues, then you might want to actually start looking into some profiling uh, tools. For um, distributed training, uh, first, for TensorFlow, we recommend that you use Uber's uh, framework, Harvard's framework. We test this, um, uh, we test every version of this on our machines. We make sure that it's, it gives the best performance. Um, Harvard, on a, a scale of a few nodes, whether it's a few um, tens of CPU nodes or uh, a few uh, GPU nodes, that means, you know, tens of GPUs, it should give you almost um, uh, ideal scaling uh, without I.O. Uh, if there are no I.O. bottlenecks. Um, and that's what we recommend that you use with TensorFlow. And you can also use it with uh, Keras. Uh, for PyTorch, we recommend that you use Distributed Data Parallel, which is a part of PyTorch itself. Uh, this is a class that uh, helps you do distributed uh, training. Um, there, is a, there is one class that is called Data Parallel, which is much easier to use. It's just one line, but it's not efficient. So uh, it, it's just down the line, it will be uh, a bit problematic to scale beyond like a couple of GPUs. So we recommend that you use the distributed data uh, parallel class. Um, with distributed data parallel, you actually need to specify uh, the back end, the communications back end on the CPU partition. We recommend that you use the MPI back end. Um, on the GPU partition, we recommend that you use the NECL uh, back end. Um, and there are tutorials here for how to use this data, the distributed data parallel. It's actually, it's, it's straightforward. And if you have any questions, please let us know. 
So um, for the workflow tools, uh, a few words about uh, some things. One, first of all, Jupyter, as I mentioned earlier, is available. You can access jupyter.nurse.gov. I'm sure you've, uh, you've seen that in the, uh, in the talks today. Um, and uh, it should work on both core GPU and CPU. Um, for accessing, monitoring your training, we, um, the most popular um, uh, training monitor framework is TensorBoard. People, both uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch users use TensorBoard. Um, it's very easy to use and it's, there's a lot of community around it. So uh, we recommend that you use that. And then to run TensorBoard at NERSC, we have, uh, you can click on these links to go to the docs or you can follow these instructions. Uh, they should work um, with these instructions out of the box. Okay, um, how am I doing on time? Okay, two minutes. So uh, for HPO, if you need to do hyperparameter tuning for, um, which is something that if you're doing deep learning, you might want to tune the learning rate, the batch size, the number of layers and all of that. Um, we have uh, two packages that we, we support. One of them is Cray HPO, and that, that is what we recommend to use on the Cori CPU partition. And the other is Raytune which is what we recommend right now to use on uh, Cori GPU. Um, there, we have docs for how to use um, um, uh, Cray HPO. And it's, uh, uh, you know, the, the most important thing about an HPO framework to, um, when it comes to running it at a, mach a machine like ours or at NERSC, you, uh, is integration with the scheduler. Um, and Cray HPO in, integrates um, uh, seamlessly with Slurm. Um, and that, um, uh, that will save you a lot of time that you can just run it out of the box. Um, and we have also examples uh, that you can access to see how to run that. For, for Raytune on Cori GPU, uh, Raytune is, is, um, is, um, is very popular in the, in, in the community. A lot of people are using it. Um, it supports so many different um, uh, backends, different algorithms, this different scheduling algorithms. And we also have a um, um, uh, repo here that shows you how to, uh, to run with, um, uh, to run it with Slurm. Uh, I have here a GIF, which you can see for yourself later. So essentially it's the, the codes that you will see in that repo is all you need to change is two lines, uh, the number of nodes that you're using, and then um, uh, the, the, which, PyTorch version or TensorFlow version you're using and then just running your code and it should run out of the box. And it, it uses multiple, uh, mo not only a single uh, GPU node with eight GPUs, but you can use multiple uh, GPUs um, and as many, um, yeah, so multiple nodes uh, that will have multiple GPUs. So in this case, I'm using two GPU, two, two nodes that have eight GPUs each. So it's running 16 experiments at any time. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we also have uh, some resources um, uh, for people to uh, uh, delve more into deep learning for science. Um, uh, we left, I left some links here uh, that you can check out uh, uh, for yourself uh, later. Uh, most importantly, the Deep Learning for Science School has, um, uh, which we uh, ran last year, it has had so many lectures. Uh, on different topics that we thought we thought that are most relevant to people who are newcomers to deep learning for science, uh, and the recordings are available on YouTube. Um, so yeah, so um, uh, we're very excited about the potential for uh, you know of deep learning for science. Uh, we're trying to support the the different scientific communities and the user community in in so many ways and. Uh, um, uh, we hope that the the the, the software that provides is, is that gives you the best performance. And please, if you have any issues, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, and we encourage you to uh, join the NERSC uh, uh, user Slack. And there's a machine learning uh, channel there in case you want to ask general questions either about machine learning or about machine learning at NERSC. Thank you.